when you're building a boat obviously you've got to get all the bits of timber and you may not have them all before you start you've got to start building the boat with the keel and the stem and the transom then comes the planking if it's clinker then the ribs then the seats the knees and all the internal bits of timber work if you're really lucky and can go to a, a timber merchant or a, a supplier and, and get most of your stuff in one place that's ideal but usually for boats you end up getting stuff from three or four different sources because it's just not that common that most of the timber you require but generally certainly in the UK a nice bit of hardwood for the keel is what you're after the keel on this one here is a piece of oak um, select, selecting your oak is really a case of going and looking at it in the timber yard or in the suppliers um, and making a decision there and then on whether it's suitable or not and you're going to have to buy something oversized and get it machined down just to ensure that you get nice clean faces and it, it ends up the size you require if you get a nice piece of oak it will be solid stay together shouldn't split anywhere it's finding the good bit of oak in the beginning really and you're going to have to buy something oversized and get it machined down just to ensure that you get nice clean faces and it, it ends up the size you require if you get a nice piece of oak it will be solid stay together shouldn't split anywhere it's finding the good bit of oak in the beginning really so you can uh, you can use Iroko for the keels uh, some Iroko tends to be a bit brittle um, if it's a, a nice straight keel for a rowing boat then that's not much of a problem as so long as your Iroko has been dried and you cut a straight piece out Iroko can kick one side or the other especially if it's cut out of a larger piece most timber can really um, but on this sailing dinghy the keel the keel has got a rocker so the keel is bent to shape and it's also got a center plate slot cut in it and I have had trouble with Iroko before being bent and having a hole cut in the middle of it that it does tend to split away from from the cutout uh, which is why I, I prefer a nice piece of oak the transoms this is Kaya mahogany uh, and it's made up of two pieces if you're lucky you could find a a board that's 22 inches wide wide enough for the whole transom but the issues then are whether the board is going to warp or cup while it's on the boat or while you're building the boat and we'll talk about that in a, in a minute or two selecting the planking for a clinker boat like this it's good for it for the the grain to run across the short dimension of the plank but as you can see here when this plank swells or shrinks it's going to be along the annual rings and the, that's going to be minimal if the grain was running the other way and the grain was running along the plank like that there would be a measurable difference in the plank when it when it when it got wet and the swelling and shrinking would be measurable and so if you multiply that by the 11 planks on the boat that would end up being quite a noticeable amount of movement that when the boat was afloat the planks would swell 
then when she was ashore for the winter, the planks would want to shrink, couldn't shrink all the way back to where they were, and so they would split. So if you can end up with the grain on the short dimension of the planking, that's really what to aim for. We're talking about the keel of, of that boat, and that's actually the, the offcut off the keel. You can see the grain there, but oak is, once it's dried, it's, it's pretty stable and it's just going to get harder throughout its life. There isn't going to be any noticeable movement, certainly in the width of the keel, because the grain, and so most of the shrinking and swelling, is going to be in the depth of the keel. For larger boats, uh, OPP has become quite popular for keels and, and big pieces of timber uh, because it's available in, in massive great bulks and I say it doesn't really have a grain, it, it clearly does, but, but it is quite a uniform timber and uh, whereas 50, 60 years ago you'd get a big bulk of elm to use as a keel for a larger boat, that's just impossible to get now. So you'd, you'd go for OPP on anything bigger than sort of five, three by five inches, something like that. But for, for smaller boats, I just have a feeling that OPP has got a tendency to, it gets quite a lot of little tiny checks cracks in it when it dries and I just mm, I'd rather have oak uh, for a small boat keel. This is just a, a section of a, a biggish bulk of timber just really to show you the what a tree looks like but but you end up with the, the very centre of the tree and then the rings spreading out from the centre. Right out in here, the sapwood, this is softwood, so there's quite big gaps between the rings, and the dark part of the ring is the winter growth, and the paler bit is the summer growth. So there's a lot more summer growth than there is winter growth. In the centre we've got an area of hard, dense heartwood. Moving out, this timber is usable here. But when we come out to here, this is the sapwood, and that's the wood that's actually still alive in the tree. And that's where the sap runs to feed the tree and you can see that this piece of wood has been outside and the sap wood is still wet, has absorbed moisture and has started to discolour. Taking a slice off this tree you can see that there are shrinkage cracks developing already out from the centre of the heart and a, a check in there from the surface and it doesn't take much to actually break it apart. And you can see there how, how stained it is in the cracks. So those cracks have been there for a while. This is our bulk of timber showing the centre of the tree and the rings. If we cut our plank out like that when the tree was wet, if, we, if this was a tree trunk and we had the, the tree trunk sliced through and through, which is where the cuts, the tree is just slashed through the saw like that and we ended up with a plank there. As that dried the rings would shorten, so we would end up with a piece of timber that 
it was that shape and not ideal for planking in a clinker dinghy. When the tree when the tree is sawn up, obviously if they saw it through and through all the way through, some of the boards that come out will be ideal for planking. If we've got a board cut out of this section, when that is kiln dried or seasoned, the shrinkage will be along the rings and so all that will happen to that is it will get very marginally narrower. And that's the sort of timber we want for clinker dinghies. If you're using timber like that for keels and you have to use something that's unseasoned, you have to be aware of how it's going to move as it dries out during the construction. If you end up with a piece of timber like that out of there, As that dries, the rings are going to shrink, so that is going to end up slightly exaggerated, but that is going to change in every dimension and it's going to be a real nuisance. 